friends welcome to my february reading journal wrap-up video sorry this video is a bit delayed i've been traveling a lot in february so i didn't really have a chance to do a lot of my spreads until early march so hope you enjoyed the spreads that i've made so far i'm not going to spend too much time talking about all of the annual spreads and the reading challenges uh, i'm just going to flip through them so you can take a look as to how they've been filled since I was traveling, I spent a lot of time listening to audiobooks, so that brought my total in February for books read to 10. I had quite a lot of five star read this month, so it was a bit tough to pick a favorite. I also read, again, a lot of female authors. Um, I did have quite a bit of a diversity though when it came to the nationality and race of um, the author, so I'm hoping I could keep that up for the next month. As I mentioned, most of the books that I read or heard were audiobooks because I was on the move a lot, but I did manage to read two ebooks as well as two physicals. In terms of the genre, Again, fiction dominates my reads. I'm trying to get better in nonfiction, but it, it's sometimes hard to find like a good nonfiction book. Most of the books read were adult, and um, a quarter of them had an LGBTQ rep. I also read two memoirs, two fantasy, self-help or historical fiction, and one poetry book. The first book I read in February was Crying in H Mart by Michelle Towner. I absolutely loved this book. It was so good. I just loved the relationship that she had with her mother and it just reminded me of my own mother um, and it just felt like I was reading about myself for most of it. This food is such a big part of the book. I wanted it to be the centerpiece and so um, I use Sticky Club uh, subscription box stickers and it was funny because their theme for February was actually food related and so it fit perfectly with this book. The second book I read was She Who Became the Sun. I had requested this book for like months at my local library and it finally became available so I was so excited and I also had very high expectations going into this book so I was a bit disappointed because my expectations were so high. I guess I struggled to connect with Zhu to stay engaged with the story and too much of the plot occurs off page to me um, and so we are blind to almost all climatic events whether they occur during Zhu's monastic life or during the war and we hardly see any actions. Mentus incidents at the monastery and the battles between the red turbans and the Mongols are skimmed over and it feels as if important pieces of a puzzle were missing. I still gave this book four stars though because I really wanted to like it a lot and I got a lot of Mulan feelings from reading it and I'm obsessed with Mulan so <laughs> for all it was a good book but it just wasn't a five star read for me. The next book I read was The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck and this was the first nonfiction book of the month. The book definitely had a lot of good quotes however it wasn't a five star read for me. Um, I just wasn't in love with the author at times. Um, I just felt like it did get a little bit ridiculous with how much referred to his former banks all the latest behavior. Like, we get it, you're a walking green machine. Um, but the book also contradicted itself a bit in some areas. And he definitely walked a fine line when discussing certain issues as that pertain to women. And so I just wasn't a huge fan of some of those moments. For the spread, I used a lot of stickers from my Antiquarian sticker book. I just, I can never find a way to use them. And so in my laser spreads, I'll just try to make the best out of them. The next book I read was Inside Out and Back Again. And I absolutely adored this book. I cried and I smiled and I could relate so much for the main character. As someone whose family was also persecuted during communism, I know firsthand about the struggles. And also as someone who's an immigrant in this country, I felt for her as she was trying to adjust to the life here. I highly recommend this book to everybody that I meet because it was such a beautiful, well-written story. I really wish everyone could sit down and read this book and especially children everywhere and hope that they become friendlier to those that are different from them. And I just wish the world was more accepting. And I feel like I'm sounding like the character from Mean Girls, but this book really touched me and I really hope I, we can see some change in the future in how people in this country are treated. A lot of the butterfly stickers that you see in here are from the notebook therapy washi tape. Um, and I'm just obsessed with this washi tape, honestly. The butterflies are so, so beautiful and they go with every single theme. 
The next book I read was Other Words for Home. And this falls in a similar theme to the previous book. And I just, I absolutely loved it too. It was so touching. It was so good. It was so well written. And it addresses racism and Islamophobia, as well as the sacrifice inherent in leaving your country in search of safety. This book gives a voice to a much needed perspective in the Western literature. And I, I, I highly recommend it. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend you read this one. This book just made me smile and cry and gave me all sorts of feels. I used a lot of the washi tape store uh, washi tape in the spread um, and some of the butterflies from the notebook therapy. The next book I read was A Thousand Ships, and I just, I love the concept of this novel, giving voice to the women of the Trojan War a whole lot more than I enjoyed the actual experience of reading it. And I feel like I was a bit bored at times and very disappointed, especially at Penelope's chapters. Instead of learning about what she was feeling and doing all of this time, we learn about the shenanigans of Odysseus. Like, okay, I read the Odysseus. I just want to know how Penelope was feeling. And I just did not get that at all. And also in a book aiming to be a feminist retelling, you're really going to engage in a woman a woman hate, slut shaming, and exclude Helen's voice. I was just hoping this book would give me some new fresh perspective for these women, but I just didn't get that. And if you're not very familiar with the Trojan War, I think this book would be good. But for somebody like me that have read every single retelling out there, I just it, it just didn't hit the mark. The next book I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And I don't know what else to add to this book that every single booktuber out there hasn't said yet this book lived to the expectations and it was just absolutely amazing. I adored it and this is the story of a woman, an icon, whose want or love would never have been accepted in her time and the choices that she made to protect it. And while I rooted for her to be overcome the misogyny of her profession, I also mourned the loss of her true self in favor of pleasing a world that caters to men. If you haven't read this book yet, I highly recommend it. It is so good, so well written, and I just couldn't get enough of it. The last book I read for February was A Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough. And I'm not going to lie, this book made me really depressed for quite some time. It's just crazy to think about everything that's happening in our planet. And like it opened my eyes to what is happening. Attenborough brings his decades of expertise and famous voice to the table, reminding us just how dire the environmental situation has become and how quickly we're approaching the cutoff for meaningful change to prevent disaster on a global scale. Ending with a sense of purpose, with a hopeful tone, and a plethora of next steps, this is an important read and I highly recommend it. We cannot address our climate crisis without facing it head-on. We can all do a part at protecting our environment. And if you haven't read this book yet, definitely do so. So that is for all of the books that I read in February. You'll notice that I only have 8 spreads out of the 10 books that I read. I just haven't gotten into doing all of them just yet, um, but you can follow me on Instagram to be updated with all of my latest spreads. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and which spread was your favorite. See you on the next video.